at some point you almost go, this can't be this freaking easy, can it? But it's quite remarkable how consistent this is. And remember, as traders, right, we're not looking for 100%. Ideally, we'd love to find a setup that works like you know, 60, 70%, somewhere in there. If you had just bought the 61.8 there and risked to new lows, well, that's fine. You took a bit of heat. And then, of course, it turned back up. But wow, what a level. You know, 30, 35, maybe even as high as 40% of the time, you're going to have to get stopped out and just walk away and book a loss. But look at what happened here. You get filled. All right, I got one day of sweat. Then it gaps open lower the next day. Oh, man, this, I don't know. And then all of a sudden, here comes a fucking rally just out of nowhere. And I mean, how would you feel a week later? Oh, my fucking God. Look how incredible that buy was. What a move, eh? What's fascinating about this is, you know, everything that we teach at TRI, and I was even looking at this last year. I don't know. Do you see any letter of the alphabet? Remember, I've told you guys, weekly Ws, they are what, you know, if you want to get good at investing your money, it's it's not rocket science. It's actually incredibly simple. I remember looking at this thing down here, and I saw this weekly W, and I went, oh, gee whiz, you know, should I buy some? $100 a share. Ah, Germany Christmas. I mean, maybe you could have said also too more kind of stuff that we teach at TRI. You know, maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the market break out uh, trend line resistance and then hunt W's on the other side of the trend line. Well, I mean, it doesn't really matter. The point, I guess, is just I think there were lots of reasons uh, for you to be bullish um, of uh of the Goog alphabet, whatever the hell you want to call it, coming out of this bottom. Suppose, uh, you know, we've been having a lot of fun trading this ICT guy set up. I think you could make the argument that, and what I do find fascinating is this stuff works on all time frames. Because remember, the universe is a fractal. So time reference actually makes no difference, whether it's a 10 minute chart or a daily or a weekly chart. Lower highs and lower lows defines a bear. So we broke to new lows, keep in mind it's a weekly price chart. Broke to new lows. So that is a key level here. We rallied up, back down. Didn't make a new low. So that's good. Weekly Ws, right? Then we went and busted that previous level. And you can even see they closed it up right up top here. And so at that point, and you know, if you look at a daily chart, this probably broke out there and closed above that line, wherever the hell that is. Yeah, there we go. So you can see lower highs and lower lows defines a bear. Boom, they broke it, closed it above there. This is this fact, actually, you probably see on my charts, I put this ICT market structure shift note. Might as well give the guy a shout out. I mean, I'm not here to uh, hijack other people's concepts. I'm perfectly fine. Credit editing this to him. I think it's a perfectly good idea. So let that market sh shift happen. You got to have a close above that high though. And then all you do is just draw a 61.8 fib. I mean, it, it, at some point you almost go, this can't be this freaking easy, can it? But it's quite remarkable how consistent this is. And remember as traders, right? We're not looking for 100%. Ideally, we'd love to find a setup that works like you know, 60, 70%, somewhere in there. And look at that freaking price action. If you had just bought the 61.8 there and risked to new lows, well, that's fine. You took a bit of heat. And then, of course, it turned back up. You know, we also have these Ws down in here. Look at this cute little daily W right down in here. You could have just said, well, you know, ICT, blah, blah, blah. I really do like this market structure bottom down here. I'm willing to buy this W and risk against this low. This is a... Adam and Eve set up, you know, we cheekily call this an Adam and Steve or a Adam and Olga. <laughs> but long and short of it here, wow, what a level. And what's even sicker about this, take a screenshot of this, folks. It's just insane how sick this is. So market comes dumping down into here. Maybe you're kind of like, you know what? Love the concept. Yep, everything's setting up bull. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the same logic to a lower time frame chart down in here. And ironically enough, hopefully you can see, right? We can actually go fib off of that high down to that low. And now you're like totally sharpshooting your entry. 61.8 after the 61.8 pivot. And look how much heat you took there. 
you know, you got filled on this day because you're buying against this original bottom here. And you're like, oh, wow, man, that didn't work out very well. I finished down on the day, you know, and as we say, uh, Johnny Hoagland, he always says, uh, you know, this is the one business where you're paid to be uncomfortable. A lot of times coming in and buying, this is a business where you are paid to be uncomfortable and you don't know what the fuck's going to happen. And there is a realistic possibility that, you know, 30, 35, maybe even as high as 40% of the time time you're going to have to get stopped out and just walk away and book a loss. <laughs> it's terrible. But look at what happened here. You get filled. All right, I got one day of sweat. Then it gabs open lower the next day. Oh, man, this, uh, I don't And then all of a sudden, here comes a fucking rally just out of nowhere. <laughs> I mean, how would you feel a week later? Oh, my fucking God. Look how incredible that buy was. And, of course, looking back in hindsight, was that a half-decent trade idea? I mean, look at that. Straight up. <laughs> so, is there any value in respecting weekly Ws? <laughs> Thank mm-hmm. you.